spiral galaxies. When Edwin Hubble discovered that galaxies existed beyond the Milky Way, he also started to notice that they came in different shapes. So he developed a system for classifying galaxies based upon the shape. So one of the categories he came up with is a spiral galaxy and that's designated with the capital letter S for spiral. So what are some of the characteristics of spiral galaxies? Well in terms of shape spiral galaxies have a nucleus or central bulge so that's the round bright part in the middle. A halo which in this picture we can't see it because we're looking face on but if we looked at a spiral galaxy edge on the halo extends above and below the disk of the galaxy so all spiral galaxies have a halo they all have a disk so edge on the disk is thin face on nice big round disk and within that disk we see spiral arms. So all of those things are consistent with being a spiral galaxy. Spiral galaxies are also known to be filled with gas and dust. When you look at a spiral galaxy, the bright parts are what you typically notice, but there's also dark parts, and those dark parts are where the gas and dust are blocking the light from the stars within the galaxy and so that's a good indicator that there is a lot of material there if it can actually block the light of the stars. Star formation comes from the gas and dust so the fact that there is a lot of gas and dust means that you typically are going to have a lot of star formation and in spiral galaxies that is typically concentrated within the spiral arms because that's where the gas and dust gets concentrated. Population 1 and 2 stars so uh, population 1 this is like our Sun these are later generation stars so they are going to have uh, heavy elements as part of their composition. Population 2 stars are first generation. So these were the first stars to form and these are going to be composed almost exclusively of hydrogen and helium. So the later generation stars are mostly in the disk first generation stars are going to be in the central bulge and in the halo. Now Hubble didn't just say okay we're going to call these things spirals and leave it at that. He created subclassifications and this picture is called the Hubble tuning fork and he actually pictured this as uh, describing the order of galaxy shapes in terms of formation that they actually changed from one to the next. He was wrong about that. So that's one of the few times Hubble was wrong. But we still use his subclassifications. So in the case of normal spirals we have three subclassifications S with a little a, a little b, and a little c. So SA is characterized by having a large bulge. So that's going to dominate the galaxy. A very little disk in comparison to central bulge. And you can see that in this galaxy, very, very big central bulge disk, not much bigger than the central bulge. Close spiral arms, they 
wrap really close to each other. There's not a lot of space between the spiral arms. The other extreme is SC, where now our central bulge is very small compared to the entire disc. So the disc is very, very large compared to that central bulge. And now our spiral arms have a lot more space between them. In between the two is SB, so it's going to be intermediate. The bulge is not going to be as tiny as an SC, not as big as an SA, so it's going to be uh, probably about half the size of that disc. And spiral arms, got some space between them, not as much as an SC, not as small as an SA. So SBs are the intermediate stage for any kind of uh, spiral galaxy. So these are the spirals.